And so there are things we open ourselves up to and we don't realize that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's not about Jesus, worshiping Jesus, serving Jesus, the glory of Jesus, and it's spiritual, it's probably evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll I'll just put it that quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, In 1 John, it says that we're to test the spirits. Mm -hmm. And here's how you know. Is this about Jesus? No. Okay, it's probably bad. Yeah. Right? Because uh, angels uh, work for God, the holy ones, right? And evil ones work for the devil. And they present like it's really good, but it's not. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Chad, this is our 100th episode of, of the podcast. Which Happy is, 100. Yeah, I don't know what we're supposed to do to celebrate that, but that's kind of a big deal. It's a big milestone. Has it, it, we're already at 100. Yeah, so during COVID, we, we came up with some ideas like let's do video devotionals. Let's, you know, let's figure out a way to do service where you can still have experiences at home and for kids and students and adults and all that. And then we're like, and let's start doing a podcast because <laughs> we, we didn't we, have we... enough chaos going on. Let's start this thing. And we had no idea where it would go, but here we are. 100 episodes later, so congratulations. Well, Robert, thank you for leading us through 100 episodes, bro. Yeah, thanks to everybody for sticking with us. If you're listening to this, that means you made it pretty far, and uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. And if these podcasts do benefit you or benefit others, you can always like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. But if you're listening to the 100th episode, you probably have already done that. Well, the 100th episode, we just thought, What's the weirdest stuff we could talk about today? <laughs> What's something totally different, unique that we haven't talked about in the other 99 episodes? Yeah, so this is if this is your first time, uh, we're talking about weird stuff today. Yep, we're talking about ghosts, we're talking about demonic activity, we're talking about uh, just spiritual realm, things in the, the unseen world, and we're going to unpack all of it so clearly that we completely understand it after 20 minutes. So I'm excited, <laughs> excited for your leadership in that chat, and you're, you're going to get us there. So Well, hopefully it'll be helpful, but there'll still be some mystery for sure. So right out of the gate, Chad, people that are listening to this, most of our audience, Western culture, with that comes a certain mindset. And when we start talking about spiritual things, people go... Yeah, I don't know if I actually believe in all of that. Yeah, and and we we tend to pride ourselves in Western culture of nope, we're just, it's logic. Let's give it a diagnosis. It's some kind of if you're you know hearing voices or seeing things or whatever, it's some kind of psychosis, and there's a pill for that, and there's a you know whatever. Um, then you go to other parts of the world, and you go into Eastern culture. And there, it's it's very much the other extreme, and it's like, no, yeah, that person's demon possessed, and and they they real they're real fast to call out. This is spiritual warfare. This is spiritual attack. So, what's reality, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of all of the above, I think. Uh, well, the Bible says that um, there's spiritual activity going on all around us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't live in a universe, uni one. We live in a multiverse. Uh, it wasn't the Marvel comic book writers that came up with that idea. Mm-hmm. The Bible's all, always uh, spoken of not just the physical realm, but the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. And so what we call angels are actually spiritual beings. Mm-hmm. The Bible teaches uh, two-thirds of the angels that God created are holy angels. Mm-hmm. They worship God. They love God. Uh, they serve God. But one-third of those spiritual beings that we call angels rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven. And this group is led by Satan Mm -hmm. and they hate us, uh, he and his team. And so uh, we call those fallen angels or demons, but angels themselves are spiritual beings. So if you were like, Chad, do you believe in spirits? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that they're ghosts? Well, I'm going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. There's Mm -hmm. there's an instance with a, a ghost and a conjuring in the Bible. If you said, Chad, do you think they're aliens? I would say I, I believe there are beings that are not of this world. Mm-hmm. Um, all those things are in the realm of spiritual act- activity. So, uh, yeah. What do I think? I think it's all of the above. I, I think uh, some of us have emotional problems. I think some of us have uh, deeply spiritual problems that are being misdiagnosed. Yeah. Yeah, there are moments throughout Scripture you see this kind of crossover between the physical and the spiritual realm. You see moments where all of a sudden eyes are opened 
And, you know, there's this story in the Old Testament where this guy is now able to see the armies of angels protecting, you know, and able to see what's happening in a, in a spiritual realm. You have moments like in Daniel where all of a sudden a hand just shows up and starts writing on a wall. It's like, where did that hand even come from? And and gives this this prophetic word. And um, you, you have that. Jesus, after his resurrection, walks through walls. Uh, he just all of a sudden he's in a room where the door was closed, and and you yeah. see these moments where it, there's this this kind of metaphysical, uh, supernatural thing happening. And yet he's not a ghost. Mm-hmm. He ate food. People yep. could touch him, which means their hands didn't pass through him. Yep. There, there was still a physicality to him. It's his resurrected body. It's something different. Yeah. And so you see that kind of thing. So so what does that mean for us? Because again, in Western culture, we go, I don't know if I, I believe any of that actually exists. The fact that it does exist and the Bible's clear and Jesus affirms it, and we see it not just in, you know, a couple passages, you see it all throughout the narrative of scripture and, and what's written. Um, what does that mean for us? What what practically does that mean for you and for me, for anybody who's listening? Well, I think um for believers in Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, you, you just have to be aware that that we are at war. Mm-hmm. Uh, you preached on spiritual warfare a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there is a war going on, and and I love how you said it because um, you had that bell, you know, mm-hmm. and you were like, if you don't know you're in a boxing ring, you will get your bell rung. Yeah. Um, and and we have to realize there are spiritual forces pressing against us. Uh, that there is a war going on. Um, I talked about the third of the angels, so let's just teach some Bible here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Bible mentions three archangels. Uh, you have Michael, who is the war angel. You have Gabriel, who's the announcing angel. And you have Satan, who is the angel uh, that that fell, mm-hmm. or Lucifer, or mm-hmm. the devil. There are different names in, in, tra- in tradition. So a third of the angels fell. Uh, Michael, actually, uh, in Revelation, it says that he's going to hurl that dragon down, mm-hmm. talking about Satan. Um, so those... Angels are spirit beings. There's rank and file. There are some that are more powerful than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but throughout the New Testament, uh, different spirits are mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked about it this past weekend. Uh, the verse that we taught this past weekend, maybe we'll do that here again in a, in a moment. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay, listen to it again. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. That means there's a spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, in the Bible, if you see a lowercase s, that could be your spirit, talking about an inner man. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be uh, spirits, angels, either holy angels or fallen angels. If you see a capital S, that's the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So all these things are talked about, and, and there's a real war going on, and we just have to be aware of it. Yeah, there's this moment in the Bible where you know Michael shows up, and he's running a little late because he was fighting the, the prince of, of, of Persia, and yeah. it was like, oh, sorry, I got caught up in this this battle. So there seems to be even this this regional spirit who's a, a spirit in that region, and there's spiritual warfare going on, and there's there's actual battles taking place, there's actual fights taking place, and things again in the unseen realm, uh, but the unseen affects what's seen, mm-hmm. and and that's true even right now. You're your thoughts, your consciousness, they are unseen and they are affecting your body, your emotions, the things that, that you can see. And so there's there's a connection between these things. Um, we, we talked about this in the previous series, but I want to just touch on it because when we talk about spiritual battle, it's not like, hey, I'm walking down the street and all of a sudden, boom, I get knocked over, you know, kind of thing. It's it's spiritual battle. When, it, when we talk about the unseen engaging with the seen, majority of that battle is going to take place within the mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is when we talk about what's the crossover between unseen world and, and seen world. Uh, the mind is is really the hub. It's really the place where that that spiritual warfare is going to take place. And, and so again, if if you weren't with us in the last series, we talked a lot about some practical tips, some practical things you can do. When there's a moment that you go, okay, I think this is not just me having poor thinking about something or mm-hmm. me fixating on something. I do think there's a spiritual oppressive force uh, that's creating fear in me or anxiety or whatever. What is the proper response in that? How do you, as a follower of Jesus, respond to that? Yeah, and that's a great question. So I, I talked about it this past week, and I'm going to repeat some things, but it, it it's worth repeating. Mm-hmm. Um, so quick story. Uh, Katrina and I were at a conference last week. I spoke in a conference. We were listening to another speaker, and he was teaching that verse, 2 Timothy 1.7. Mm-hmm. And... 
I'll quote it again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I learned that verse when I was a kid at Vacation Bible School. We sang a little song. Mm -hmm. Hand motions, the whole deal. Um, And the pastor just took a moment, and uh, he said, you know, okay, so God has not given us a spirit of fear. He said, you got to realize that fear is a spirit. Is it an emotion? Yes, but it can be a spirit Mm -hmm. that's attacking you and trying to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. And so Katrina, my wife, was with me, and she never elbows me during a sermon. She never, you know, does the should thing. Mm -hmm. You should do Mm -hmm. what? She doesn't should on me. Yep. Uh, And if I start to do it, you know, I'm like, I don't want to do that either. But later on at dinner, she was like, hey, uh, did you get anything out of his name was Joby Martin was the guy that spoke pastor's big church in Florida. He goes, you get anything from Joby's talk? I go, yeah. She's like, what'd you get? I go, fear is a spirit. She already knew mm-hmm. that, that that was probably speaking to me because I was afraid to do some things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just say it, cigar preacher and some of the things I got going on, you know, a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went back uh, to the room and was thinking about that as we were going to sleep. And the truth is, um, whether it's a spirit of fear or a spirit of anxiety, mm-hmm. paranoia, a uh, spirit of lust. And, and I'm going to pause you real quick just to clarify. For people that are listening, fear is not always a bad thing. Sometimes fear is a good thing if it's a facilitating fear. You're, you're driving, somebody's drifting into your lane, all of a sudden you get hit yeah. with that fear and it helps you get out of that lane. It, it's the debilitating fear. That's the, the spirit of fear that, that we're talking about. I'm talking about a, a paralyzing yes. thing that it's like you cannot shake it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're not talking about emotion mm-hmm. or a heightened sense mm-hmm. or the hair on the back of your neck or you know you got to be on your guard all of a sudden. There's a bear in the in the woods. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna. We're we're talking about it. Just feels like uh, fear is all encompassing mm-hmm. and it's pressing in on your life in such a way that it's keeping you from moving forward. Yeah, um, that's a spirit of fear. Um, I lust popped out my mouth just a moment ago. Let's go with that one. Mm-hmm. I'll just be vulnerable with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are certain. Uh, I, I, I'm going to just be really vulnerable on the podcast today, guys. Uh, there have been moments just in my life in ministry where a certain person will be around me, and it's not even uh, a, a, a person that I would normally be attracted to, but there's just something in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand chemistry, and I, I know when a woman's attractive and that kind of thing, but I'm, I'm talking about a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, about a year and a half ago, there was this person, and every time she was around, I was like, it, there's just something in the air here. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I talked to Katrina about it. I've mentioned before on podcasts, anytime I have that, I talk to my wife about it. That makes it real. Which is really, if somebody's looking for a practical, that is a really helpful practical thing, is early on, when you get just that weird, you know, there's nothing that happened. There's nothing yeah. that you go, okay, that's inappropriate, but just that vibe. Yeah, uh, that that little warning flag, that little alarm that goes off to say something to to somebody, uh, it really does remove a lot of the power of that. So you do that with Katrina. I do, mm-hmm. but every time this person was around, I would feel that mm-hmm. uh, no inappropriate anything, nothing had never been said or anything. It was just when she was around, I would feel that. And so one morning, I'm praying about it, and I'm like, and I ask the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. "What is that?" And immediately, uh, there's a spirit of lust. Uh, around that person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I already knew what to do with that. And Mm -hmm. so I'm going to tell you right now what to do, whether it's a spirit of fear or uh, right now we're talking about spirit of lust is um, if you feel like the Holy Spirit is, is telling you, this is more than just normal life. And in this case, temptation, whatever. Um, what you do with a spirit like that is I, I will say, Holy Spirit, is, is it a spiritual thing? Mm-hmm. And if I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying it is, because uh, he impresses thoughts on my mind and things like that, I'll say, what's the spirit's name? And so in this case, the spirit's name is lust. And so what I'll do is, is out loud, because uh, the Holy Spirit can read your mind. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit resides in you. So you can talk to the Holy Spirit on the inside. But evil spirits can't read your mind. They can affect your mind. They can impress things on your mind, but they can't read your mind. Mm -hmm. And so I literally, uh, at home, by myself, in my office, uh, you've been there, Robert. I'm sitting in my leather chair, Holy Spirit. There is something strange, like out of the ordinary with Mm -hmm. this person. What is it? Spirit of lust. So I out loud say, spirit of lust, uh, that's been affecting me Mm -hmm. every time this person is around. 
uh, I command you in the name of Jesus. Now listen to how I'm going to say this. Yeah. I command you, spirit of lust, in the name of Jesus, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus who is God. I'm a blood-bought child of his, and I command you, spirit of lust, in the name of Jesus, to leave me and depart and to never return. Mm-hmm. And so in the name of Jesus, leave now. Well, I prayed that. Anytime that person's around, she's my sister. There's there's no sense of that in the air anymore at all. Mm-hmm. And it just left. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had other situations like that, whether it be fear, uh, whether it be an anxiety about something. Um, we were in, um, I, I, I gave one example. This is another example. Uh, I gave an example this past weekend. This is another example of uh, a person in our church. And he had some weird stuff going on in his house. And he's like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But every once in a while, I see like walking shadows. And uh, he was like, would you come, would you come pray? Mm-hmm. And so I said the person's name and I, and, and I said, listen, man, I will do that. But I don't have anything special because I'm a pastor. Mm-hmm. I said, but I will come and I will teach you how to deal with some of this yeah. uh, if, if it shows up. And so I went to his house and here's what I prayed. Holy Spirit, yep. is there a presence here uh, that is evil, that is not good? And if so, what's the Spirit's name? The Holy Spirit told me the Spirit's name. It was a little bit different, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to say its name. But the, the Holy Spirit told me its name. And so out loud, because the spirits can't read your mind, mm-hmm. I commanded that Spirit in the name of Jesus, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, mm-hmm. Jesus, who is God. I'm a blood-bought child of his, and so I command you in the name of Jesus to leave. And... Uh, what was really cool is is after that, we were standing on this guy's front porch and a dove like landed like right in front of us, you know, which I kind of think was coincidence, but it meant a lot to him. Yep. But after that, no issues in the house. Yep. Uh, they all slept soundly. And uh, that was like months ago. And I yep. saw him a couple of weeks ago and he said, no, nothing, nothing yeah. since then. I did walk around the house and I prayed. Yep. You know, the blood of Jesus over the house and hedge of protection. But those kinds of things are real. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have authority in Jesus' name. We don't want to get weird about it. Yep. You know, Jesus talks about it in Matthew, and a uh, group comes back and says, Hey, Jesus, we cast out demons in your name. He's like, Yeah, you have authority in my name, but don't rejoice over that. Rejoice that your name is written right. in the Lamb's Book of Life, right? That your name is in heaven. So we don't want to get too weird about it. We want to keep the main thing the main thing. But we also want to be aware that there are spiritual forces at work in the world. Yeah, one of the things when I was in college, we would go on these mission trips to other parts of the world, and one of the trainings was spiritual warfare stuff, and also understanding when you go into you know, the hotel, when you go into the places you're staying, you don't know what spiritual activity has been invited into those spaces. And so we would we would pray over the spaces we go into. And I know people, when they move into their homes, you know, they bought a used home and they don't know, but something feels a little weird that they just pray over that space. And, and, uh, and that's an okay thing to do. And to your point, as you were explaining, kind of here's how I do that. Um, the power is not in us. The, the power is in Jesus. Jesus is the one who is the complete embodiment of love and also of power and of authority. And you see Jesus throughout the the Gospels. You see Jesus whenever he encounters somebody who's demon-possessed or a demon. They are terrified of Jesus. There is no comparison of like, oh, how's this battle going to go down? Yeah. Uh, they acknowledge that that Jesus is God out of the gate, and they're like, can you can you please go easy on us? Can you throw us in those pigs instead? Yeah. You know, can you? Yeah. Uh, and and they try and just like you know negotiate a little bit with with Jesus on that. Um, the power is in Jesus, and so when you say it's in the name of Jesus, it, it's His power, it's His authority. Now, um, He's He's adopted us into the family, and mm-hmm. He's filled us with His Spirit, and so yes, we carry that with us. Uh, but it's not us. There's this story in Acts where these guys are like, "Let's go fight demons," you know, and uh, it's in Acts. I think it was Acts 19. I could be wrong on that. Um, and and so they go kind of pick this battle, and the demon's like, we know who Jesus is, and we know who Paul, because they mentioned Paul's name. We know who Paul is. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're you know, there was kind of this arrogant, prideful uh, posture that they had taken, and and what you're saying is, no, that's not the posture that we take. It's in humility, and it's in in faith and the power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. What What's really weird to me is that in recent years, and it's not all the time, but it comes up every once in a while, and uh, I'm not talking about demon possession right now in the example I gave. That's that's another level. Mm-hmm. I was talking about the spirits that press against us. Which would be uh, oppression. Oppression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not possession. Um, but in those moments when I feel like that's what's going on, you know, 
saying it, it sounds so weird, but in the moment it doesn't seem weird. Mm -hmm. And it's like the Holy Spirit takes over. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to quote the verse again. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. That's a, that's a spiritual power mm -hmm. and of love and, and, of, and of a sound mind, of wisdom. And in those moments, it doesn't feel weird. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of in the flow of, of, you know, by God's grace, uh, his spirit. There are also times when Jesus says, they come back and they say, Jesus, we tried to cast out mm -hmm. that demon. And he'll say, well, that one only comes out through prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, why fasting? Here's my answer. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there, there are a lot of things in the realm of mystery that I don't understand that I'm not equipped for. Mm -hmm. But my missionary friend who's in Western Africa is very equipped for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is not something, to your point, we want to be arrogant or flippant with. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you have some heavy things, um, and, and it's part of your family story, like, like mm -hmm. your mama, your grandmama, your great-grandmama dealt with. Generational. Yep. Those, are, those are generational, spiritual kind of curse things. Um, I, would, I would get alone, and I would ask the Holy Spirit, is this a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like the Holy Spirit impresses on you, yes. What is the Spirit's name? Yeah. Why is that important, the name? I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I just know... I know we see it modeled in, in the Bible, you know, what is well, our name is Legion because we're many. And, you know, you have that moment of like... Well, I, I, th I think it's because it's a it's specific thing. Like mm -hmm. it, it, the, the demon has a name mm -hmm. or the demon has a role. And so even if we don't know the exact name... Mm -hmm. Um, the, the demon has a role and I, and I think it's that very specific command of in the name of Jesus, you're out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's why it has a name. Yeah. Um, I was taught that scripture says that. And so that's, that's what I go with. And the Holy Spirit's told me names that I don't, I don't know what the name means. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other side of it is, okay, well, let's say I missed it and, and the Holy Spirit's telling me, but I'm getting it wrong. What does it hurt me to out loud just say, go away in the name of Jesus? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get names wrong all the time. Yeah. Now, <laughs> um, you know, if, if it's something bigger, you got something really weird going on, then then you probably want to talk to uh, some spiritual authority and get some yeah, help get with some that. get some people praying with you as well. Yeah, but this is not a flippant thing. This is not an arrogant thing. Mm -hmm. This is simply surrender to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to—the Holy Spirit in the realm of his power, two things. Uh, he will fill us. Mm -hmm. That's about character. So fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's Galatians 5.22. So every day, Holy Spirit, fill me, right? I want to walk in your steps. I want your fruit, your character to be evident in my life. The other ministry of the Holy Spirit, so he'll fill us and he'll come upon us. The come upon us is those moments of wisdom, those moments of ministry, uh, those moments when we know what to pray for somebody. Uh -huh. and there's you say no words, and you're like, where did that come from? Yeah, there's yeah. no way we could know. Um, and so what we're talking about with this is Holy Spirit, come upon me mm -hmm. and give me wisdom. Is this a spiritual thing? Mm -hmm. And if so, again, what's the Spirit's name? And then out loud, I'm going to command the Spirit to leave in the name and authority of Jesus. Mm -hmm. so. One last thing before we, I know this, this is going by really fast here. Uh, we talked a lot about, here, here's how you combat that. There's also a, a proactive side of here's how you don't welcome that in. Because there, there are things that we can do to open our minds, open 100%. our homes, open spaces, whatever, uh, to spiritual forces of evil. So what, what are those things that we could be proactive on? Yeah, this is just not appropriate behavior for a, yeah. a follower of Jesus. So uh, just because it's spiritual doesn't mean it's holy. Mm -hmm. So there are evil angels. And they do not have pitchforks and horns. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil, let's give the devil his due. He's a really good liar. And he presents himself as an angel of light. I gave the reference, talked about all that this past weekend, if you want to listen to the sermon. And so there are things we open ourselves up to, and we don't realize that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's not about Jesus, worshiping Jesus, serving Jesus, the glory of Jesus, and it's spiritual, it's probably evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll just put it that quick. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1 John, it says that we're to test the spirits. Mm -hmm. And here's how you know. Is this about Jesus? No. Okay, it's probably bad. Yeah. Right? Because uh, angels uh, work for God, the holy ones, right? And evil ones work for the devil. And they present like it's really good, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so stay away from spiritual things in the world that don't have anything to do with Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, tarot cards, psychics, horoscopes, getting your palm read, uh, all that kind of, I'm going to use the word crap because that's what it is, all that kind of crap, uh, you are putting yourself in an environment 
where you are asking evil spirits to get involved. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk about Ouija boards. Oh, it's just a game. There's some weird crap that happens with that. Yeah. And so I, I want to encourage you to just to stay away from any of that. If you have any internal conviction about anything along those lines and you're a follower of Jesus, just go ahead and walk away from it. Yeah. Um, you there, know, there, there are times I go, because there was a season where I felt like we were getting those calls kind of often, and there was another pastor on staff, and so they'd be like, hey, this this house has some weird stuff going on. They want a pastor to come pray, and so we'd, you know, two of us would go, and we'd we'd pray, and we'd walk in, and usually I'd ask a question, like, hey, you know, tell me about the family, tell me about kind of, you know, the house, and like, is that your Ouija board? And like, oh, tell me, and there was always some, like, weird superstitious stuff that yep. they were doing, and, I, and yep. I, so I would say, yeah, we're going to pray, but also you should stop doing that. Like yeah. those things that, that you're doing, you're, you're actually welcoming in some of the things that you're trying to get rid of. And, and so don't don't compete with yourself on this. Well, one of the things, too, we've got to realize, there's some things that come out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. I mean, you watch it. I'm like, this is Bible demonic yep. activity. I can't watch a lot of the scary movies, honestly, not because they're it's too whatever, suspenseful. I, I can handle the suspense. It's because I look and I go, it's true. Yeah. It's it's too real. That's right. And and so where and where is the source of that coming from? The creativity that looks very similar across these genres. And so I go, yeah, this is it's a little too real for me. Yeah. Now I let's end with this. Mm -hmm. um, greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. It's not something we have to be afraid of, mm -hmm. but it is something we've got to be aware of. Yeah. And in that, uh, we gave some tools today of how to fight. If if you really believe the Holy Spirit's going, this is a spiritual thing. Yeah. And and just and just trust Him. Um, you know, we just had Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked about this this past weekend, too. You know, well, is it okay? My answer is it depends. Mm -hmm. There are some things you reject, some things you receive, some things you can redeem. But anything in, in, in the realm of Halloween that is demonic, yeah. stay away from that. Yep. Um, the, the farther we can just stay away from that stuff, the better. Yep. We want to fill our minds with the truth of God. We want to fill our lives with, with light, not darkness. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to be aware. Well, this is going to be a little different. It is our hundredth episode, so we're doing things different in this one. Um, I'm going to ask Chad, would you would you lead whoever's listening? Maybe they're they've been dealing with some of that spirit of fear or whatever. Would you just lead us through a time of prayer and, sure. and praying that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if that's you, you know, like I've just had anxiety and it's weird and I can't shake it. I've had fear and it's weird and I can't shake it. Uh, maybe even depression, it's weird. I can't shake it. Can't sleep at night. I don't know what's going on. Um. Perhaps you want to go in a quiet place, turn your palms up, and just ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom. And is, is this a spiritual thing? Holy Spirit, are our spiritual forces pressing on me? And you might want to ask the Holy Spirit, uh, what, what is that Spirit's name? And just follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, I thank you and praise you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That at your name, uh, darkness trembles. And so if we decide that you're leading us there and we need to rebuke a spirit. Give us wisdom, Holy Spirit, in that at the name of Jesus. And out loud, uh, we will command that spirit to leave and to not return in the name of Jesus because as blood-bought children of the King of kings and Lord of lords, we belong to him and no evil spirit is welcome. And so in the name of Jesus, we'll command that spirit away out loud. And Jesus, I thank you and praise you that, that greater are you than anything in the world. And I thank you and praise you that one day you will return. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and you will wipe out all evil mm -hmm. for all time. And we pray again that you would do this quickly. Give us wisdom. I pray we wouldn't treat this flippantly. We wouldn't get too weird about it. We wouldn't come become obsessed with it. But we would rejoice that our name is written in heaven, that Jesus, we belong to you. And I pray we would just be aware. And when it's time to fight, uh, give us wisdom of that. And Jesus, again, you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. At your name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you're Lord. 
So give us wisdom and thank you that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of wisdom. Teach us, we pray. In your name we trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you would like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.